Tonight, city could go further out of sight. Talk president gunning for rivals. NBA's pro season on the horizon. William sisters to meet at Indian Wells. And all the latest from the second last stage at the Tirreno Adriatico. Very good evening, Africa. You are watching Quest Sports News, Benji. It's a happy Monday for both of us for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've proved that uh, there's only one red team in the Premier League. Absolutely. <laughs> glory, glory, Man United. We will talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But for now, let's talk about football happening tonight. We start in England, where despite being well in the lead in the Premier League standings, Pep Guardiola is still uneasy playing games on a Monday. After previous midweek defeats, where City were knocked out of the FA Cup and a surprise loss to Basel, the Spanish tactician is more comfortable confronting rivals over the weekend. We have to have a bad, a bad experience to play on Monday's games. So we well, have to be focusing on a game in a stroke because the stroke away is always complicated. They have fighting to be in the Premier League, though that's why I can imagine how tough will be. Have to be focused on that. In the situation this season is I think is an exceptional. So because of the distance that is not normal in, 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 in the in the beginning of Mars. But uh, what I said before, you know, so before the Basel game, so it's almost done and almost done and the people don't believe me. I know that, but we lost one too. So in the Premier League is quite similar. It's almost done but still we are not the champion. Now, it was a very dramatic weekend, but a lot of drama surrounding the Liverpool United match specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you saw what happened with um, Carragher, Jamie Carragher. Yeah, it's, it's a bit disappointing. Jamie Carragher, with all his experience, mm. should be able to take a loss. You know, <laughs> it was a, a fan who just, uh, you know... Taunting him, really. Yeah, but that's what fans are going to do. Mm. As a player, you, you react better. But he's, I know he's no longer a player, but... He should still be Absolutely. professional, you know. And he is, uh, you know, he is a role model of some sorts to people. So what happened is that he was in his car driving mm. somewhere, and the fans right next to him started taunting him about the Liverpool defeat. And his best reaction was to spit at the fans. And it, there's footage of it on the internet. Importantly, though, he did apologise mm. for that incident, uh, but he's been suspended at Sky indefinitely. indefinitely. So uh, mm. maybe he'll have time to think about it. I think he will. <laughs> and then there's Frank Lampard saying that Manchester United don't necessarily need Paul Pogba. No. I, I, don't, I don't agree. <laughs> Frank Lampard should focus on West London, but... Paul Pogba was signed for close to a hundred million yeah. pounds, so you cannot say so we definitely that need uh, he's needed, man. Yeah. He's needed. He's uh, a load of talent, so he's definitely needed at Old Trafford. He mm -hmm. had uh, a bad time with Mourinho mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. season, but uh, they fixed their problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Frank Lampard should just stay in his lane. <laughs> <laughs> Tottenham recovered from their midweek Champions League exit with an emphatic 4-1 win at Bournemouth, but it did not come without a prize. The man who has scored 35 goals for Spurs this season, Harry Kane, limped off with yet another ankle injury. He'll have a scan to determine the extent of the damage sustained colliding with the homekeeper, Azmir Begovic. The 24-year-old left the field immediately afterwards and headed straight down the tunnel. It's the same right ankle he's injured twice before. With all the circumstances, I think uh, we are so happy because it's a massive three points for us. Well, Arsenal are working hard to win back their frustrated fans, but there were still thousands of empty seats at the Emirates during their 3-0 win over Watford. Manager Arsene Wenger admitted it's a concern. Of course, I worry because I want our fans to be behind the team and be happy. And uh, we are in a job. We have to get the fans on our side and uh, do absolutely everything to do it. To achieve it. Elsewhere, Chelsea claimed a 2-1 home victory over Crystal Palace as all three of London's top clubs were victorious over the weekend. And speaking of fans, there were chaotic scenes at London Stadium as disgruntled West Ham fans invaded the pitch during their side's 3-0 loss to Burnley. Captain Mark Noble was having none of it, tackling one of the fans. Other supporters aimed their discontent at the director's box. Co-owners David Gold and David Sullivan were forced to take cover after being pelted with coins. You know, no, no one wants to ideally see fans on the pitch. I don't think anyone wants to see that. But they get frustrated. I don't think there's any malice in, in um, 
uh, Noble getting hold of someone and, and Barnsley, I think they're trying to say, come on, just get off the pitch. You know, a few of the players are trying to guide people off the pitch. So let, let's get, you know, whatever you, whatever's going on, let's at least get on with the game. But while the events in London may have been upsetting, they weren't quite as extreme as what was going down in Greece. The Pirate Thessaloniki's owner, Ivan Savages, stormed onto the pitch brandishing a gun in a hip holster after his team's 90th minute goal against AEK Athens was ruled offside by the referee. Bizarrely, or perhaps not considering the threats that had been made, two hours after the match had been abandoned, the referee awarded the contentious goal to Payok and to give them a 1-0 win over the league leaders. Meanwhile, our reports today say a warrant has been issued for Savage's arrest, while amid the chaos, the Greek sports minister announced the suspension of the league. Switching back to England, Moyer's time in charge of West Ham has seen 10 defeats and just six wins across all competitions. The Hammers have conceded 12 in their last three games, while in November last year, they were routed 4-0 at Goodison Park. Now Chelsea boss Antonio Conte must be secretly regretting his decision to loan out striker Nishiba Shuai. The Belgian came off the bench to score a dramatic 94th minute winner in a five goal thriller against Frankfurt last night. This was his seventh goal in nine games since joining Dortmund in January. Earlier in the match, Peter Sturge's charges took the lead courtesy of a generous own goal by Marco Roos. Luka Jovic then equalized to add an interesting twist to the highly entertaining game. But Chuai, who had come on midway through the second half, scored a goal that put Dortmund 2-1 ahead. The plot certainly thickened when Danny Bloom slotted in a stoppage time equalizer for the Adler. Very few would have predicted the dramatic scenes that ensued three minutes later, with Bashuai popping up with the winner. BVB remained firmly in contention for a top four finish. Elsewhere, Bayern Munich hammered Hamburg 6-0 to continue their dominance over the opponents. The last 13 meetings between the two have produced an aggregate scoreline of 55-6 in favour of the Bavarian Giants. And Bayern continue to lead the way in Germany. Very much out of sight, they hold a 20-point lead over Schalke. On the wrong end of the lock, Cologne can move off the bottom with a positive result against Werder Bremen tonight. Messi has scored again. Well, not on the football field this time. The ecstatic Barcelona forward announced that he and his wife Antonella Rocuso had become parents for a third time, and it's a boy. The Argentine superstar pulled out of Saturday's 2-0 win at Malaga to be present for the birth of baby Chiro. Barca maintained their eight-point lead atop the La Liga standings with the Messi-less victory, while elsewhere, Atletico and Real Madrid both won to stay second and third, respectively. To the athletics track now and South Africa's 400-meter world record holder Wade van Niekerk is positive. He'll come back stronger than ever. The Olympic and world champion is still recovering from knee surgery in October last year. I'm using each and every moment and every, each and every day wisely so that I can come back to even stronger my, uh, and better myself for the future. Van Niekerk admits the recovery process has been a grueling one. Yeah, it was very tough, but I mean, you, you learn each and every day. I get time to get to know myself be, uh, better, get to handle things better. So I actually appreciate this time that I have now. It teaches me quite a bit of the process that lays ahead of me. It was very tough, but I mean, you, you learn each and every day. I get time to get to know myself be, uh, better, get to handle things better. So I actually appreciate this time that I have now. It teaches me quite a bit of the process that lays ahead of me. Backing Funny Cook and other big-name athletes across the continent is Africa's leading digital communications company, Liquid Telecom, who are sponsoring the Athletics Grand Prix series for the next three years. Well, we started off a year ago thinking about how we could bring to life our concept of having the fastest fibre in Africa. So we started by supporting Akani Sambini as the fastest man in South Africa. And so naturally the next step for us was actually to support something where we could see him competing against some of the world's best athletes. And we wanted to support grassroots athletics in South Africa as well to ensure the future of the sport.
And of course, you can catch the CEO on Seriously Sports tomorrow evening. Now, staying with athletics, American University student Michael Norman smashed the world indoor 400-meter record that had stood for 13 years at the NCAA Indoor Championships in Texas over the weekend. The world junior 200-meter champion clocked 44.52 seconds in a field that featured five finishing times quicker than the gold medal winner at the recent IAAF World Indoor Champs. Lost for words, you know. I can't believe it's happened. Uh, it's just a reflection of how hard and work and all the sacrifices I've made throughout this fall season. You know, I'm really proud of all the hard work that I've done and my coaches and uh, our training staff. You know, I, I, this wouldn't be possible without them. Where was the key part of this race for you where you think that number came from? Uh, the last 120. I had to make sure I finished and put 100% effort in coming home. 44-53, 44-52, ladies and gentlemen, you have just seen a world record set. In basketball, the Rockets booked a spot in the NBA playoffs after overcoming the loss of an injured James Harden to beat the Dallas Mavericks 105-82 this morning. The win sees Houston move one and a half games ahead of the Warriors for the best record this season. They also hold the tiebreaker should both finish with identical records. On Saturday, though, the Rockets' 17-game winning streak came to an end with a narrow loss at the Raptors. A Steph Curryless Golden State lost 109-103 at the Timberwolves to make it back-to-back -back defeats on the road. It was also the Warriors' eighth loss in 15 games against Northwest Division teams. Meanwhile, despite LeBron James leading from the front, the Cavaliers lost a fourth game in six. Julius Randle's career-high 36 points led the Lakers to 127-213 victory over the Wine and Gold. Julius Randle with a 30-point night. Elsewhere this morning, the Pacers edged the South Six in Boston, while Joel and Embiid start for the 76ers in their win at the Nets. Tomorrow, the Rockets and Trailblazers host the Spurs and Heat live on KS1. Up next, the Super Sixers lineup in Zim confirmed. And close but no cigar for Tiger Woods. Quest Sports brings you a triple dose of the best sports action. In March, strap in for a thrilling start of the season when Formula One races through the streets of Australia. The fight for dominance continues in the IAAF World Half Marathon Championship. Then in April, who will set the pace in Boston, Hamburg, Milan and Rotterdam? Perfect serves will be the order of the day as tennis finest battled out in the Davis Cup and Fed Cup. And in May, cycling's Grand Tour gears up for an uphill race to the finish in the Giro d'Italia. The kings of the court lace up for tip-off in the NBA playoffs. All this sport and more in HD on Quest Sports for the fan. Can't get enough of Quest Free Sports, huh? No! Well, look no further because if it's skill you want, we've got you covered. Quest gives you the best football money can buy. Oh, Simply buy the Quest decoder, get connected, and unlock the passion. As he plugs the ball into the back of the net. With top class football from Europe. Oh, no! And that is the end of the story. And the Samba Flair of South America. That is special. It's an easy one touch finish. So don't miss out and get more world class football live and uninterrupted. Can't get enough with Quest Beyond TV. The Copa Conmebol Sudamericana. Thank you for staying with us as we continue to give you the very latest in sports. News. Absolutely. There's plenty more left in the second half of the show. The final set of round-robin fixtures in the Cricket World Cup qualifiers in Zimbabwe concluded today. The hosts played out a dramatic tie with Scotland as both sides were dismissed for 210. 
both progress to the Super Sixes stage of the qualifying tournament as to Afghanistan, who snuck in after Nepal beat Hong Kong. Ireland hammered the UAE in a game between two sides who advanced to the Sixes phase. The West Indies ended top of Group A unbeaten following their win against the Netherlands. In the longest format of the game, South African fast bowler Kahiso Rabada has been banned for two games by the ICC for shoulder contact with Australian captain Steve Smith on the first day and is sending off of David Warner on day three of the second test in Port Elizabeth. It has resulted in Rabada accumulating more than eight demerit points within a 24-month period that automatically means a two-match suspension. And in his final contribution, KG fired on all cylinders. He blew the Aussies away with match figures of 11 for 150 as the Proteus leveled the four-match series at one all following a convincing six-wicket victory earlier today. So my reaction to KG's suspension is uh, probably not consistent with most uh, South African cricket lovers. I think he thoroughly deserves to be suspended. I absolutely agree with you. I think that, you know, we do understand that sportsmen, you know, tend to be passionate. Mm. But it's happening with him a little bit too often. Mm -hmm. And it looks bad on him. It makes him look bad. And I think that he will learn his lesson after this. Mm. I think he's let his teammates down. Yeah. He's let the country down. Not only because they might just lose uh, these two <laughs> tests without, without him, him, but because most cricket fans go to the stadium to mm. see him and A.B. de Villiers. Yeah. So that's a bad thing for him. And hopefully, he's just 22. Yeah, anyway, he'll so he'll learn. He'll, and he does say he actually has released a statement saying that he deeply regrets what happened and that he's disappointed his team mm. and the country. Well, we hope uh, he'll uh, move forward from this and continue to perform as well as he is. Absolutely. To the tennis court now, and world number one Simona Halep survived a first set wobble to safely negotiate her way into the fourth round at Indian Wells. The top seed went down 6-1 to American wildcard Caroline Dohide in the first set. She again found it tough going in the second, but managed to eke out a tie-break win before taking the third 6-2. The Romanian struck 17 winners to Dohide's 33, but it was her 30 unforced errors compared to the Americans' 47 that made the difference. Simona survives. We've seen a lot of upsets this year at the BMP Paribas Open, but the world number one makes sure she isn't one of them. Meanwhile, Japan's Naomi Osaka booked her spot in the fourth round with a 6-3, 6-3 win over Sasha Vickery. Osaka is looking in impressive form, having already beaten Maria Sharapova and Agnieszka Radwanska in the previous rounds. Elsewhere, 2017 Roland Garros champ and sixth seed Jelena Ostapenko suffered a straight set loss to Croatian Petra Martic. So it's been 20 years since Venus and Serena Williams played their first professional match against each other. The famous sisters will be facing off for the 29th time in the third round at Indian Wells. It'll be an intriguing contest with Serena playing in her first tournament since giving birth. Um, it'll be fun, you know. She's, you know, was one of the best players in the world last year. So for me to have to go up against that so fast is, it'll, it'll be good to see where I am on my level. Um, we'll see. I'm not putting too much on myself. I think she's playing really well and just honing her game. And when she's missing, it's not by much. So obviously, I have to play better than her and see how how the match goes. And here's a breakdown of the pair's previous meetings, with Serena holding a 17 to 11 advantage overall. They are expected on court from 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. And of course, you can catch all the action live on KS2. Meanwhile, Novak Djokovic was the shock casualty in the men's tournament at Indian Wells. He suffered a second-round exit at the hands of a player currently ranked at 109 in the ATP rankings, Japanese qualifier Taro Daniel. The former world number one and five-time winner of the tournament looked far from his best as he made a return to the court after an elbow injury. He struggled with far too many unforced errors, going down 7-6, 4-6, 6-1. For me, it felt like... Uh first match I've ever played on in the tour. Um, very weird. I mean, I just completely lost rhythm, everything. Just uh, struggled also a little bit with health. 
There was no such disappointment for Roger Federer, though. His match was interrupted by rain, but that didn't stop the 20-time Grand Slam champion from beating Argentine Federico Del Ponis 6-3, 7-6 to reach the third round. In other results, Juan Martín del Potro safely progressed to the last 16, while fourth-seeded Alexander Zverev lost to João Sousa of Portugal. To the Greens now, where Tiger Woods came within touching distance of his first victory since his comeback from back surgery. He finished to join second at the Valspar Championship in Florida this morning. I was close. You know, um, I, had, I had a chance today. Um, Unfortunately, I just didn't quite feel as sharp as I needed to with my irons. So I was playing a little conservative because of it. Uh, I just needed to handle you know, the par fives a little bit better. Woods finished alongside Patrick Reed, just one stroke behind winner Paul Casey, and is optimistic about the progress he's made. And I hit the ball well. I made some putts this week. And, you know, the, the thing that I was the most happy about this week is that when I did miss, I missed on the correct sides again. And, you know, that's what we have to do out here. This is by far Tiger's best result since his last victory at the 2013 WGC Bridgestone Invitational. This season, he's missed uh, the cut once uh, while earning a top 10 finish at the tournament he hosts, the Hero World Challenge. Meanwhile, Reed could very well have been a contender for most disappointing shot of the day with his howler on the 18th. Had he held it, this putt would have given him the outright lead. That ball thought it was a boomerang. Kenya's Rugby Sevens team came agonizingly close to winning their first cup final of the current World Series season. Willie Ambaka and Samuel Oliach scored first half tries against Fiji, with the Islanders able to match the East Africans' efforts. After being locked up at 12 all at halftime, Fiji ran away with it, scoring three unanswered tries in the second half to win 31 to 12. Alosio Sovita Naduva's try midway through the second half wrapped up the win for the Flying Fijians before. Paula Gianni Sinukula put the icing on the cake. South Africa won the bronze medal match after destroying the USA 29-7. The Blitzbox ruthlessly dealt with a weakened Eagles team that were missing key stars, including Sevens Player of the Year, Perry Baker. South Africa remained top of the overall standings. Moving to 15-man rugby, Ireland were crowned Six Nations champions with a game to spare after beating Scotland 28-8, while England suffered a second loss on the trot after going down to France 22-16 in Paris. The Irish bagged their fourth Six Nations title and first since 2015. And just two days after the world celebrated International Women's Day, Chiara Penko was celebrated for her combating prowess as she was crowned the first ever Extreme Fighting Championship strawweight queen. South Africa's Zanela Aliasov, the first homegrown female fighter to be signed to the EFC, faced the daunting task of taking on the Italian Beastie Barbie. Eliasov took the fight to the mat in the early rounds, hoping Penko would tire due to the high altitude at Carnival City. However, Penko absorbed the myriad punches thrown at her till the fourth round before a submission tactic forced Eliasov to tap out. She came, she saw, she conquered. Welcome to your new women's strawweight champion against all odds, Kiara Panko. Stage 6 of the Tirreno Atletico was filled with plenty of drama as two crashes determined its outcome. Peter Sagan was in mesmeric form and came agonizingly close to sealing first place. With 31 kilometers remaining, the first of the horrible crashes occurred at the Peloton. Fortunately, not many riders were affected by the accident. Adding to more of today's woes was a more serious crash that occurred with just 7.8 kilometers remaining. Stage favorite Fernando Gaviria was at the receiving end of some road rash. Marcel Kittel and Peter Sagan then raced to a close neck-to-neck -neck finish with Kittel emerging victorious. Sagan and Kittel! Kittel, I think, just, just holding off the world champion who settles for second place again. But my word, that was close. And with that, Polish rider Mikhail Kwiatkowski holds a slender overall lead out in Italy.
Meanwhile, Movistar Mark Sola clinched the overall Pyrenees title four seconds ahead of Simon Yates. David De La Cruz won the eighth and final stage. A drama and unrelentingly wild speeds are a few words that best capture the action at the recently concluded Rally of Mexico League in the World Rally Championships. Sebastian Ogier finished ahead of his main rival, Chris Meek, who crashed during a vital stage. M Sport Ford driver Ogier started with a 35 second lead over Meek, who would go on to secure his first podium of the season in third spot. The Dunganen driver finished behind Hyundai's Danny Sordo. Despite a puncture in the power stage, Sordo came second and added a Further four points to his championship tally. This was his best result since 2015, but the spotlight was firmly on Francis Ogier, who grabbed victory by 73.6 seconds in his Ford Fiesta. So after three legs, Ogier holds a four-point lead over Terry Noville. Action next moves to France with the Tour de Course from the 5th of April. And Formula E returns this weekend with the Punta del Este e Prix from Uruguay. Catch both the qualifying and race action live on ESPN on Saturday evening. And just like that, that's it from us tonight. Remember, you can tweet us at Quasi Sports using the hashtag Quasi News and follow us on Facebook at Quasi Sports. And you can keep yourself up to date with all the latest sporting news by visiting our website at QuasiESPN.com. It's a wrap for tonight, but we will be back again at 1900 CAT for more from the sporting world. From all of us, have a lovely night. Good night.